Hello everyone, I'm Heather. I'm coming to you live from my bookshelf situation. So anyone that's been watching my videos, you may have heard me say, because I've said it about 9,000 times, I'm on a very strict regimen of limited book buying this year in order to achieve the optimum goal of having fewer than 100 unread books in my house by the end of the year. The reason this has to happen is because my house is fucking tiny. It's just like a Victorian terrace house, like smack in the city. You know, it's like urban, small. Uh, two bedrooms upstairs, that's it. You know, one bathroom, one kitchen, one dining room, or not dining room, like living room, dining room. Basically just living room where we have our table, you know. And all of the rooms that we have are tiny because when it was built in 1882, you know, like how much furniture did you need? You know, you'd just be happy you have a house like that that sort of thing. So it has become like critical mass. It's a situation. I have too many books. I have, you know, like 170 or something at this point, even after culling and culling and culling and reading to shit and not buying books. Um, it's also a problem because I share the house with two other book lovers, which is, you know, cute. We can bond. You know, I wouldn't want to spend my life with someone who's not a book lover, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but also, it makes for serious book storage issues. So, like, loads of people on BookTube, I'm watching them, they're like, oh, I've got 400 books in my house or whatever. And, you know, it's, it's getting a bit tight, blah, blah, blah. Like, obviously, their situation, you know, is better space-wise. But for me, the space-wise is bad. I have, like, the three bookshelves. So, we've got this one here, right? Uh, this one here. Um, and this one here. So we don't just have books, right? We also have shit. You know, our kid has like games and shit. Like we have puzzles. Like my husband needs like this for his homeworking shit. Okay. So then you get like side piles. Like I don't know what the fuck is back behind this stuff because there's side piles. Also, we've got some pretty serious side pileage going on here. Um, which is basically my kid stuff mainly. And also, you know, shit for winter because where the hell else is that going to go? everything is covered in books so then that merged you know or that like splooged we ran out of room in the shelves and i had to start making new piles okay this is one of the three this is three of the piles there's also four piles upstairs in the bedroom like it's just ridiculous now like this is not sustainable i don't know what the fuck is on this shelf like how can you even see like what's there like every time Anwen goes to like get a book she's like oh i want to read a book all of the books fall off like we cannot keep going like this. So I've decided a whole year to get to less than 100 is not a sustainable goal. It's not a realistic goal. It's not actually going to do anything in the short term to alleviate the problem. So I've been watching. So coming to the point. Uh, by the way, I'm not insane. Like my makeup's really intense. I was just sort of like trying it out um, for like a night look. Which I mean, because I got like some new glitter and stuff, you know, and I was testing it out. Um, and then I just stopped then decided to do a video. So, like, I've been, like, I've been, like, disco glammed for booktube or anything. Um, not that that would be bad. Um, but I've been watching a couple of videos recently. Um, Sarah from Your True Shelf did one. Um, also, Doris was on about how she's made a breakthrough in her, like, TBR list. She's under, under 200. Um, like, also, um, I've been thinking about this thing that Sean the Book Maniac does, where he does, like, a page 311 sort of thing. So I think what I'm going to do is unhaul some shit. That's right, folks. I'm going to do some unfucking hauling okay? I'm already unhauled to shit. And it's on my radar all the time anyway to unhaul shit and not buy shit. I'm de definitely going to read. But every once in a while, things slip through. You don't know. You don't know. And it's critical mass now. It's ridiculous. I need to get rid of some shit. So I'm going to do that thing where... You get some books, maybe you don't know, maybe you can't decide if you're ever going to read those or not. Read page 311, or um, Sarah was doing like reading the first chapter, so I might do that as well. I'll give 311 a go, and then if it's still promising, you know, or I'm not sure, I'll give the first chapter a go. And then we'll see about unhauling some stuff. You know, like I don't want to keep stuff that I'm not going to read because I don't have space, but obviously I also don't want to have all those regrets about giving away books that I end up feeling like I really wanted to read and now I have to go get it again, <sighs> which is completely against the point. Um, so that's the project for today. 
Okay, so I have a stack here of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ugh, there's only nine of them. <laughs> After all that, um, I might have to make another sweep. Like that's another day, that's another day. Round one, there's nine of them on the chopping block. Okay, and I'm gonna go through them. Uh, first one, A Whole Life by Robert C. Toller. So when I first saw this one, I was in love with it. That thought it was gonna be really good and like peaceful and lovely and lots of people said it was amazing. Uh, but then Robert C. Toller published another one and that one came up in my library, so I read that one first. And actually, it was I don't I didn't really like it. Like I didn't get on with it. I found it a bit boring and a bit like uh, like trying too hard, like that sort of thing. Um, like trying too hard to be sentimental. So now I'm worried about this one, and like it's made me see it in a different way. So we're gonna give it a go. I'm gonna read page three hundred and eleven, if there is one. No, of course there isn't a page three eleven. This is only a two hundred page book. So for that reason, I'm gonna give the first chapter a go just quickly to see like how long is it oh, my God. oh it's not in chapters like i'm gonna have to come up with a new policy <laughs> i'm glad i started with the one book that's not gonna work because it shows that i need to like rethink my strategy okay i'm just gonna read the first couple pages and then maybe flip to the middle and read like a middle page or something and then see what we have there okay Okay, annoyingly, I'm interested in this book now and want to keep it, which is stupid. Like, there's this bit here where um, it's like, the cold lady repeated horned Hannes. The walks on the mountain, she walks on the mountain and steals through the valley. She comes when she wants and takes what she needs. She has no face and no voice. The cold lady comes and takes and goes. Like, I'm keeping it, but I'm pissed about it. Okay, next one is Alone in Berlin uh, by Hans Falada. So loads of people have said this is the best book they've ever read in their lives. It was so amazing. It's got like, you know, loads of people's lists. And it's about, you know, World War II, which I like, and about like resistance, you know, and spies. And um, I just feel like, you know, I could be into this, which is why when I saw it in the book hut for free during the pandemic, I was like, I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna steal that app. That's gonna be amazing. And it has outlasted a couple different purges of my bookshelf because I just keep thinking, ooh, maybe, but it's quite big. And there's nothing about it that draws me particularly, okay? Like the number of books in my house that I'm ridiculously excited about, that if I had to stop now and be like, what book do I want to read right now? I'd say about 90,000 of them because they're so good and I'm so excited about them. Or is this one, no passion, no fire. I'm not into it, really. Like there's nothing about it that makes me go, yes! So I'm going to give it a test. Um, does it have page 311, this one? It does indeed. Okay, I'll do 311 uh, and then maybe a couple of the first pages and then see where we go. Okay, verdict on this one, I think, is to give it away. <sighs> Success. Okay, one down. Next one is Charlotte Grey by Sebastian Fox. Uh, this one is about... Uh, 1942, Charlotte Grey, a young Scottish woman, heads for occupied France on a dual mission, officially to run an apparently simple errand for British Special Operations Group and unofficially to search for her lover, an English airman missing in action. Again, World War II elements, spies, subversion, you know, bit of romance. These are elements I like. And also, I have read Sebastian Fox books in the past, I think more than one, and I enjoyed it. However, it has the exact same problem as the other one, Alone in Berlin, in that there's nothing about it that excites me and like, you know, fires me up and makes me think I really want to read that. Um, when there's so many books in the house that do do that, I think, I don't know. I don't know. There's no fire. I'll see if by reading 311 on the first couple, cha uh, first couple pages, it invokes fire. Okay, so verdict on this one again, I think, giveaway. So uh, I do think this author is really good and I will keep my eyes peeled for other ones by this author again, um, but I think this particular one doesn't invoke passion. Okay, next one, right? The Country Village Summer Fact uh, by Kathy Lake. So I won this in a Grey on Rescue Wales like auction thing, like or like a raffle. Um, and it was like in a basket, like a cute little basket with like doggy treats and like um, these cute like coasters and stuff. And I loved all that stuff. 
But as soon as I got the book, which does feature greyhounds, I did sort of think, mm, this isn't really my kind of thing. But I kept it around because I was like, I want it. It's mine. <laughs> I've never won anything. Um, and also it's got greyhounds in it. Like what could be awful about a book that has greyhounds in it? Um, but the more I'm looking at it, I think the greyhounds don't feature as prominently as I hope they would. Um, so I'm going to give this one a go and and we'll see it might be finally time to like just get rid of it okay verdict is in i'm gonna give it away it's three um yeah i think potentially like i'm gonna you know hold judgment because i obviously haven't read it but i think potentially this will be awful also all those pages i read not a greyhound in sight so i'm gonna go with no okay next one is centennial by james a mishner so I bought this ages ago when I lived in America, like full time lived there when I was like, what, 22? That is how long this book has been following me around the world. I was so intent that I was going to read this because I love like the setting of this. And I loved like when I was in my 20s, I loved like epics like this, you know, like several like decades and like generations of a family all living in a place you know and like wild stuff going on and like the frontier and like also it, it features Colorado prominently which is where I lived for high school and a good part of my life um so this is the story of the land and its people of Lame Beaver the Arapaho chieftain and warrior and his Comanche his Comanche and pony enemies of Levi Zent fleeing with his child bride from the Amish country back in Pennsylvania and of the cowboy Jim Lloyd who falls in love with the wealthy and cultured Englishwoman Charlotte Seacombe so um also potentially because it's like all old and features Native Americans it probably has like <laughs> some quite like horrendous um depictions of them in here um but you know uh, we'll give it the benefit of the doubt, you know, and read a bit. So page 311, we'll give that a go. Um, okay, as heartbreaking as it is for me to let this go, I think I'm gonna put it on the, go the giveaway pile. Like, 22-year-old <clears throat> me would have loved this. So I wish that I had read it at the time, to be honest, because I've missed that window for myself. Um, like, just like reading 311 now, it's like, um, <laughs> it's like... Um, then she saw his food, that strange combination of sauce and cup cheese, and she was about to comment on it when he said, you ever tasted my mother's cup cheese? Best in Lancaster. <laughs> and she's like, Papa Lex, cup cheese. <laughs> oh my god, so, um, I'm not gonna bag on it, because, you know, younger Heather would have been down for this, but older Heather has too many books in her house, and needs to be brutal. Okay, next one is... Um, Tom Clancy's the first Jack Ryan novel, The Hunt for Red October. So I had a thing ages ago where I was going to read every book in The Great American Read. And I still think, you know, uh, I'm working sort of toward that. You know, like I've read absolutely loads of them and I only really have, you know, there's not that many left. Um, but it's down now to the ones where, like, I don't know, I don't know, like it's getting into ones I wouldn't normally have read. And I'm sort of abandoning my like you know passion for the project so the hunt for red october seems like a good idea i like you know spies and you know like military stuff but i think the tom clancy thing it's not it's not really for me it's more one for my dad and i think my dad did say to me "Ooh, good one <laughs> when i got it um you know which doesn't always necessarily mean it's like not for me you know because we share some things you know in common bookwise um but i'm gonna put this one under the microscope put it to the test and um see what we come up with um okay annoyingly i think i'm gonna keep this one um so it's like somewhere under the freezing atlantic a soviet sub commander has just made a fateful decision the red october is heading west the americans want her the russians want her back like it sounds cheesy like this is the one with like um uh sean connery isn't it as like the russian guy like the movie adaptation of this i think that's what it is like maybe we should just watch the movie but um there was enough like you know like spy interestingness like i i'm gonna keep it like i'm gonna give it another try like we'll see what happens okay next one is um faith hope and love by Lloyd owen um so this is a local one like a local cardiff author and i think i found this one in the book hut as well and i quite like reading local author books 
because they don't often get a lot of, you know, they're really underrated. They don't get a lot of, um, you know, fanfare and like promotion and stuff, but they end up, you know, being really good. And it's, it's fun to sort of read something where you recognize the scene. Do you know what I mean? Um, but of the ones that are like local authors and stuff that I have in my house, this one, I always pass it over and I always go to a different one. Like, I don't know what it is about it that isn't like, like catching me and isn't bringing me in. Um, Alan Brady was a bit of a mummy's boy, stuck at home at 30 in the suburbs when Grandfather Paddy makes his deathbed in their spare room. He brings fresh air into Al's crash, uh, cushy number, makes him face the hardest decision of his life. Later, just out of prison, Al's world seems almost empty, haunted by his brother Will's perfect new family. He seeks in dangerous new friends what he needs from his lost kin. Like, it sounds good. Like, it sounds like a bit nuts. Do you know what I mean? Um, but for some reason, it doesn't grip me. So I'm going to give it a test to see, like, to either, you know, like, spark a bit of fire about it or just, like, fucking cut it off. Do you know what I mean? Just, like, kill it. Oh, my God. Okay, nothing to do with the book, but I just opened a random page, like, trying to find 311, and I told you I got this in the book hut. Look what I found in it. Can you see? Like, <laughs> this was someone's bookmark, but it was, like, in the middle of the book, so they obviously didn't get through that either. I'm gonna keep that and pretend like I know them, you know, like, oh, James and Andrea, they're so silly. <laughs> okay, anyway. Okay, as heartbreaking as it is, I think I'm gonna put this on the giveaway pile. Like, it, it was, like, a bit quirky. It is a bit quirky. I think I like the author, maybe, but, it, like, I'm just not, like, you know, bonding properly with the content of the book, so. That goes on the giveaway pile. Okay, two left. Next one is... Funny Girl by Nick Hornby. Um, so this one caught me when I saw it in the book hut again. I don't know why I get things from the book hut. I think pandemic time was just hard. Like the bookstores weren't open and I was just in like a crazed, depressed place. And I just needed to acquire things to do with books, no matter like whether they were good or not. Um, but this one caught me because on the back it says, Barbara had loved Lucille Ball ever since she saw Isla Lucy for the first time. Everything she felt or did came from that. I feel like that is exactly a description of me as well. So I took it home with me, not really knowing what it's about. Um, but Nick Hornby, I think is good. He's written a couple things that I think I've heard about being really good, like about a boy. Is that the guy? Anyway, um, this one is Barbara Parker's Miss Blackpool of 1964, but she doesn't want to be a beauty queen. She wants to make people laugh like her heroine, Lucille Ball. <laughs> Uh, she, uh, so she leaves Blackpool and her family behind, takes herself off to London and gets a job behind the cosmetics counter of a Kensington department store. Uh, the story of a television program and the people responsible for its writers, blah, 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 as the 1960s progress and the British people fall in love with Sophie's sitcom, the pleasures of teamwork begin to wane, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it's a bit like, that's why you can see, it's a bit sort of like 60s-ish going on here. Uh, I don't know, it just spoke to me. So I'll give it a go, like, I don't know, I'll give it a go. Okay, as much as I like the Lucille Ball elements in this book, um, there is no 311, so I read 211, and Lucy does feature prominently on that page. As much as I love that, like, the writing and everything, like, it doesn't draw me in, you know, and it, it's like, it's high stakes now, you know, we can't just, like, see a book and be like, oh, that might be a good book, like, it's got to be an excellent book for it to stay in the house, like, there's, you know, spaces are at a premium. Okay, so we've got to get more intense about throwing things out. So this one, despite what would probably be a pretty good book, the caliber, it's just not high enough. So I'm going to put it in the go pile. Okay, last one is Richard Osman's The Thursday Murder Club. So I bought this when I was going to read it with the book club that I was in um, at my work. And I then didn't get to it for some reason, like, it ended up, like, a week before I realized I wasn't gonna be able to go to the meeting, so I thought, oh, I won't read the book, like, I'll read it later when I have more time, and, you know, there's no time late now, blah, blah, blah. Um, but basically, loads of people have been going on about this, uh, you know, saying it's an amazing sort of, like, whodunit. Um, but also, I think, since buying this, I have a clearer understanding of, like, me in relation to cozy whodunits and I think maybe I understand better that that's not really for me so I'm now looking all of my <clears throat> I'm now looking at all of my cozy whodunits and thinking maybe no 
maybe get rid of that. Like I've even got two Agatha Christie books on my shelves and while I think I did enjoy Agatha Christie in the past, like, you know, cozy whodunits, they're just not for me. Uh, maybe that's why I keep passing up the Agatha Christie's despite them being on my shelves, you know? I don't know, I might get rid of those as well. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see now. We'll see what 311 is like. We'll see what the first couple of pages are like. And the fate of Agatha Christie may lie with Richard Osmond now. Uh, this one is about, um, in a peaceful retirement village, four unlikely friends meet up once a week to investigate unsolved murders. Ooh, I do like a bit of true crime. Uh, but when a brutal killing takes place on their very doorstep, the Thursday Murder Club find themselves in the middle of their first live case. Elizabeth Joyce, Abraham, and Ron might be pushing 80, but they still have a few tricks up their sleeves. Can it, how in our unorthodox but brilliant gang catch the killer before stealing? Okay, we'll see now. Okay. <clears throat> I think the writing is good. I do like the writing. I think maybe the characters might be good as well. But I'm just, I'm just not sucked in. I'm just not sucked into this. And I need to be sucked in if the book is going to stay. So I'm going to get rid of that one. And I'm also going to go get those two Agatha Christie's from downstairs. Okay, I got them. First one is 450 from Paddington, which I'm pretty sure I got in the book hut. <laughs> um, and Murder in Mesopotamia, which I think I actually bought it. Hey. Hey and why? Um, which is sad because I do love hay. Uh, this one is, there are things that my profession has taught me and one of these things, the most terrible thing, is this. Murder is a habit. It's clear to Amy Leatherin that something sinister is going on at the Hassania Dig. Something associated with the presence of a lovely Louise, wife of celebrated archaeologist Dr. Ledner. Ooh. I do love a bit of archaeology mind. Reminds me of Indiana Jones. Okay, well, we'll try it. We'll give that a try. Also, this one, for an instant, the two trains ran together side by side. In that frozen moment, Elspeth witnessed a murder. Helplessly, she stared out of her carriage window. Oh, this is a bit like Woman in the Window, which I did not enjoy. But obviously, the reason I didn't like Woman in the Window was because it was so much like ones that came before it. This was probably one of the first. So, to be fair, <laughs> can't be a cliche if it happened first. Okay, but we'll see how these go now. Okay, so I do think Agatha Christie is a brilliant writer. Um, I quite like her wordsmithing, like how she puts things down. Um, but despite that, I think I'm gonna move these to the giveaway pile. Like, I think it is just like a cozy whodunit like situation. I like true crime. Like I like like non-fiction crime stuff, do you know what I mean? Um, also I like horror now. I didn't used to, but now I quite do. So that sort of thing, but like the cozy, like, um, like murder mystery sort of thing. I think that's, that's not really me anymore. I think it potentially used to be, you know, and that's another thing about clearing these shelves away. Like I've got an attachment to these books that I got ages ago that I really wanted to read, you know, at that time in my life when I was that person. Um, now that I'm a new person with the new interests and stuff, like it's, you know, hard to sort of work out whether current Heather wants to keep it or if it's just early Heather like holding on like trying to hold on to that stuff okay y'all nine books that I'm gonna unhaul give away to Greyhound Rescue hopefully they'll get some money for that um and I've just plugged it in it's a metallic calculator thingy-majig and that's brought me from 175 or like 175 originally when I first sort of started the project on the first to now 154 unread books left in the house like that's not too shabby like that feels more like making a bit of progress I'm gonna go downstairs now and fill the holes in the shelves with books from the piles and see if I can clear maybe a pile or maybe close to a pile um and you know that does feel like we're making progress I'm gonna have to have another round <laughs> again soon oh, because nine though it's a lot isn't nearly enough to sort the problem out because the problem is dire um but anyway I feel like it's making a start thank you for watching this unhaul if you've gotten all the way to the end if you have any thoughts please let me know um if you've read any of these books and liked them or didn't like them if you've unhauled them if you've recently done any unhauls let me know what you've unhauled um, anyone who has any strategies for me in dealing with my bookshelf problem, please give me your wisdom. I need it. Um, and I will see you next week.
quickly. Okay. Bye, 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 bye.